Hey everybody, welcome to our group presentation. I'm Sally Hawkins. I'm Julie Erickson. And I'm Alisa Poulsen. And we are presenting on the benefits of play. And also, um, okay, I'm gonna say her name now. Mrs. Luna was not able to join us for our recording, but um, she was able to do a portion of this slide. So here is a brief introduction of the different kinds of play. Dear parents, did you know science says to mix up how we play? Because creating pretend worlds isn't the same as playing outside, or making a masterpiece, or playing with a team. Different kinds of play give us different kinds of skills. Help us mix up the ways we play. Trust me, it's not rocket science or anything. Okay, so that is a really great uh, company that, not company, organization that promotes play and the different benefits that you can get from it. Um, one of those first benefits is that play encourages creativity in children. Um, there is a, a study, um, and I pulled a quote from here, Ms. Uh, McGrew, Smith, and Connolly said that make-believe play is essential for kids to develop a sense of curiosity and learn how to respond to different situations. So what is creative play exactly? Um, I mean, there's so many different types of play, um, but with creative play, it's mostly, um, you know, getting those artistic talents out, whether it's like Play-Doh or imagine, imagining that you're in a different world um, or different things like that. Um, that organization, the Genius of Play, this is how they defined it. Um, it says, play gives kids a chance to truly let their imaginations run wild and create worlds of their own that they have control over. Whether it's a make-believe game or an arts and crafts activity, Play provides children the freedom to explore new possibilities and think outside the box to come up with unique ideas as well as creative solutions to challenges they face. An active imagination will continue to serve kids throughout their lives. According to a recent survey of more than 1,500 chief executive officers from 33 industries around the world, CEOs believe that successfully navigating an increasingly complex world will require creativity more than any other skill. So here is a clip from the favorite and the beloved Toy Story. So kind of before we start, just think um, as you watch, do you know any children that play like Andy? Um, and just kind of think about any benefits that you see as we watch this clip. What do you know? I'll kill you. Just do it. You're going to jail, Bart. Ah, watch out. <laughs> Mom. No, no, no. Just keep playing. Just pretend I'm not here. Oh, no. Molly. No, it's okay, Mom. It's a 50 foot baby from outer space. And she's on a rampage. Oh, red for your red lives. Red 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 Does the red light mean it's going? Okay, so just from that short clip, um, you know, if you kind of see into his room, Andy has a lot of great things going on. Um, and one benefit that I saw from watching this is just kids learn that they can deal with unexpected things. His little sister knocks over his big, huge play set, and he's okay with it. Like, he's able to work through it as he makes it a creative part of the storyline. Um, some other skills that it can teach is learning how to observe, um, identify problems, see new possibilities, and um, you know, like 
turning this storyline into something new, taking risks, um, that it's okay to make mistakes, to rethink um, and figure out a problem, to try a new solution and to share results and get feedback. Um, and these are just some ideas um, that I found um, of ways to play creatively with your children. Um, you know, whether it's creating a landscape for their toys with dirt and twigs so that they can make a world come to life or pretending that they are an animal um, or different things like that. And you can find more online um, on the genius of play.org. So I did play increases our social skills. So Dr. Rachel E. White said, socio-emotional growth can be seen in children's ability to interact with others, negotiate, and compromise. Social um, parents teach their children to play either by playing peekaboo or patty cake, racing cars, or caring for a baby doll. Children then go on to learn from their peers and teachers. Social play prepares children for kindergarten. Due to the numerous shifts that occur at the kindergarten transition, pre-academic behavioral and social skills have been emphasized as important <coughs> aspects of school readiness. Sociologist Mildred Parton came up with five different types of play when we learn at different ages of childhood. So from zero to two years old, they learn solitary play. During this stage, a child will play on their own. For example, a child may be in a room full of children, but will choose to play with blocks on their own. At two to two and a half years of old, they do spectator play. So ch the child will observe other children playing. At two and a half to three years, they have parallel play. During parallel play, children play next to each other but will not share the same activity. Three to four years old, they have associate play. During, this, during associate play, children will be playing the same game or activity but will not be working together or making connections with peers. And at four to six years, they have cooperative play. During cooperative play, children learn to play with their peers. They start to use social skills and interact with their friends. Okay, and my part is relationship between play and literacy. The more you read, the more things you will know. The more that you learn, the more places you'll go by Dr. Seuss. Play in literacy. Children who are read to and who read on their own generally do better in school. Reading allows them to open up to new subjects or ideas, which makes learning easier. Reading expands their mind and their imagination. Reading offers quiet reflection and gives your, your kids so many opportunities to think and experience worlds and situations they might, ne might, not, might never experience firsthand. In the following video, Dr. Daniel Coleman explains that developing a love of reading is a way to empower yourself as an independent person. My name is Daniel Coleman. I teach at uh, McMaster University in the Department of English and Cultural Studies. And um, I'm the co-director of the Center for Community Engaged Narrative Arts. And that really makes me interested in the field of reading and its power in society. The thing about um, developing a love of reading early is that it's basically the most significant way to empower yourself as an independent person. We often take it for granted, the practice of reading, but if you think about it, it's like you are getting the maximum mental stimulus from the minimum of input. You think it's just black marks on a page. And from that, a child or a reader generates a whole world of imagination or information. By the, the age of three, you've developed like 80% of your neur neuronal connections. And during that period, children are figuring out that the sounds and the ways people make meaning and talk to one another are connected to these black marks on a page. And they begin to hear a vocabulary and learn a variety of words that gives them power in society. Telling Tales is this incredible uh, local festival that draws thousands of families and people out to listen to authors and illustrators talk about their world of books 
And what's great about Telling Tales is you can go there and meet an amazing author, hear them talk about how they constructed the book or tell the story of the book. And this is key for kids, particularly, so that they can imagine themselves into that world. And you get to hear the author reading that book out loud. You get to hear the voice that they were imagining when they wrote those words on the page or when that illustrator created that design. Um, that uh, makes the world of literature come alive in an incredible way. Uh, research has shown that children who have a lot of reading uh, material around the house have a kind of leg up on everybody in society that doesn't have that kind of thing. And it doesn't matter if you're from a poor place, a remote place. If you have access to books and reading, you can educate yourself. And the Hamilton Literacy Council runs a book swap and shop at the Telling Tales Festival where kids can bring in books they may have grown out of and exchange them for new ones. But also, if you don't have a library, it's very cheap to buy books there. So you can start a library. At the end of the day, you can go home with a bag of books for just a few dollars. Access to reading is access to self-determination. You know, it's really how a person can become independent as a thinker. Telling Tales is this incredible festival that's coming up right away this weekend. It's at Westfield Heritage Village and uh, it's an incredible opportunity for families in this region to meet amazing authors and to have a great day out uh, together. A lot of research shows that book reading even to infants as young as six months of age is important to language outcomes by Julie Gross Lewis. Okay, so since Sister Luna couldn't be with us, I'll go ahead and read her part. So she was in charge of doing the physical benefits of play. Active play promotes an active and healthy lifestyle. Beyond the sheer fun of playing, the benefits of physical activity, especially games with rules, which school-aged children are now able to follow, can last a lifetime. Active play helps to develop muscle strength and control. Gross motor play is favored among young children who enjoy climbing, kicking, and tumbling. Active social play correlates with peer acceptance and a healthy self-concept and may regulate emotions. Body movements benefit cerebral blood flow, which, which results in a better mood, reduces depression and improves academic achievement, helps children to acquire healthy habits for life, they not only strengthen their body, but they will have a more robust immune system and reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes. Some examples of active play while you are indoors. Blowing and chasing bubbles. Simon says, musical chairs, head, shoulders, knees, and toes, indoor hopscotch. Um, she also posted some links, Sister Luna posted some links on here to go and look for, like if you're interested in finding more information or other benefits of play. And that is our presentation. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. See ya.